as well as in urban India. We know that energy is a capacity to do work. With the help of energy, machineries are being run in factories, lights, fans, whatever the thing which we use today works with the help of energy. So due to this reason, there is an increase in demand for energy. As a result of industrial development and population growth, renewable and non-renewable energy sources. Renewable resources are those which has the ability to generate energy continuously in nature and that is inexhaustible and they are known as non-conventional source of energy and they can be used again and again in an endless manner. Example wind energy, tidal energy, hydropower energy, biomass energy etc. Non-renewable resources of energy are those it cannot be quickly replenished that means when it gets exhausted it takes millions of years to get back the energy for example coal petroleum natural gas and nuclear fuels like uranium and thorium renewable energy sources biogas biogas it is composed of methane carbon dioxide hydrogen and hydrogen sulfide biogas is produced by an anaerobic degradation of animals and plant wastes in the presence of water that means air condition should be absent while the degradation of plants and animal wastes is taking place anaerobic degradation means breaking down of organic matter by bacteria in the absence of oxygen the fermentation of the waste products is being taken place by bacteria and that produces hydrocarbon gas and the residue is left behind in the tank which is rich in nutrients and it can be used as a manure. Gobar gas plants which are produced using cow dung, they have been set up in the villages and the gas is used for cooking, lighting and pumping water from wells. In this process, a digester tank it is placed underground and this digester tank, it receives the dung water mixture through inlet pipe while the other side discharges the spent slurry through the outlet pipe. On the top of the digester tank, there is an outlet and which is controlled by a pipe and from that outlet, a useful gas is being passed through the pipes and which is used in home kitchens as well as for lightning and for other purposes. Waste recycling and resources recovery programs are also being developed from the organic plant waste and night soil. And this helps in improving sanitary conditions in villages and cities. The, the plants generate enriched organic manure and that is useful for supplementing chemical fertilizers. Biogas is clean and it is non-polluting and cheap. There is a direct supply of gas from the plant and therefore there is no storage problem. The sludge left is a rich fertilizer that contains bacterial biomass. The Ministry of Non-Conventional Energy Sources has been promoting the biogas program in India. Solar Energy Solar energy is also a renewable resource and it is the ultimate source of energy. We use solar energy for drying our clothes and food grains, preservation of eatables and for obtaining salt from seawater. And India receives a higher amount of solar energy that is equivalent to 5000 trillion kilowatt per year. And this is because of its location on the Tropic of Cancer. And most of the parts of the country have 300 clear sunny days in a year. And per hour per square kilometer availability of solar energy is between 5 to 7 kilowatt. Let's discuss about the technique that is used for harnessing the solar energy. First method is solar cells and these cells are known as photovoltaic cells. Solar cells they are made up of thin wafers of semiconductor material and that material it is made up of silicon and gallium. When the sun's radiation strikes on them the sun's energy is converted into electricity. And therefore, solar cells are widely used in calculators, electronic watches, street lighting, traffic signals, water pumps, etc. Solar cookers. Solar cookers, they use solar energy, uh, that means solar heat, 
by reflecting the solar radiation using a mirror onto a glass sheet and that covers the black insulated box. The raw food that is kept in the box, the inside side walls, they are painted black in color and this black color absorbs maximum heat energy and it does not allow heat energy to escape. The box which is heated inside, it emits infrared radiation and to which the glass window is opaque. In this way, the amount of energy entering the oven is retained and the cooking pot placed inside the box and the cooking is made possible. A new design of solar cooker is also available and that involves a spherical reflector instead of plain mirror and it has more heating effect and greater efficiency. Solar water heater and this is one of the most successful application of solar energy and which is used for the purpose of water heating and till today it is being used in many households. In this process, the sunlight is allowed to fall on the flat plate. These are the collectors and which are a shallow a rectangular trays. And this is filled with water and it is properly inclined so that the sun's heat collected is at the maximum. And it consists of an insulated box which is painted black in color so that the heat does not escape out easily and it stores the heat. Inside this box it is painted black copper coil. Through this which cold water it is made to flow and when the coil gets heated the water also gets heated and that heat water is flowed out through an outlet. Wind energy is also a renewable source of energy. It is inexpensive, reliable and non-polluting source of energy which is used for the purpose of generating electricity. The windmills with 4 or even 8 blades are being used for the generation of small amounts of direct current uh, to run water pumps etc. The Indian Wind Energy Program, it is the fifth largest in the world after Germany, Denmark, USA, Spain and UK. The wind energy is obtained by making use of windmills and the blades of the windmill, it rotates due to the force of the wind. This rotational motion of the blades, it drives number of machines like water pumps, floor mills and electric generators. The number of windmills installed in a definite pattern in a clusters, they are called as wind farms and they generate a large amount of electricity. Wind farms are installed in coastal regions, open grasslands or hilly regions. Hydroelectricity The energy that is generated from water is simply called as hydroelectricity. Hydroelectricity, it is produced from energy that is released when the water falls from a greater height with a greater force and the water flowing in a river, it is collected by constructing a dam where the water is stored and then it is allowed to fall from a greater height. The blades of the turbine which is located at the bottom of the dam, when the water falls on this turbine, the turbine blades start rotating and it produces electricity. Hydropower energy it also does not cause any pollution and it is renewable and normally the hydropower projects are multi-purpose projects which are used to control floods for irrigation, navigation, etc. Runoff of the river systems. Hydropower systems, they use the energy in flowing water to produce electricity or mechanical energy. There are several ways to harness the moving water to produce energy. Run of the river system, it does not require a large storage reservoirs and they are often used for small scale hydro projects. For the run of river hydro project, a portion of the water, it is diverted to a channel pipelines. We can also call it as pressurized pipeline and this pipeline, it delivers it to water wheel or turbine. 
the water moving with a greater force it rotates the wheel or the turbine and that spins a shaft this motion of the shaft can be used for mechanical process like pumping water or it can be used to power an alternator or generator to generate electricity energy from urban waste so from the cow dung we can prepare a gobar gas which has a potential to get converted to methane and if this sources are being utilized and then the indian villages could benefit a lot a solid waste from the towns and cities in india in the year 2000 which was about 60 million tons the urban waste has 40% organic component that means it can be recycled as a source of power like the gobar gas the utilization of organic waste it forms an integral part of sustainable development a pilot plant it has been set up in delhi to treat solid municipal waste for the conversion into energy it produces nearly 4 megawatt energy per year sewage in the cities it is used for generating gas and electricity tidal energy the term tide it is used for the periodic rise and fall of waters in the ocean and it is produced by the attraction of moon and the sun this rise and fall of water it produces a large amount of energy and that energy is called tidal energy in india exploitation of tidal energy it is done in gulf of kutch kambay and sundarbans Other suitable sites for tidal energy are Lakshadweep Islands and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. This tidal energy it is harnessed by construction a tidal barrage. Due to high tide, the sea water flows into the reservoir of the barrage and it turns the turbine, and which in turn it produces electricity by rotating the generators. The reverse process takes place during the low tide when the sea level is low the sea water stored in the barrage reservoir flows out in the sea during the process the flowing water turns the turbine therefore the energy is generated continuously there are only few sites in the world where tidal energy is suitably harnessed in india gulf of kambay gulf of kutch and the sundarban deltas are the tidal power sites non renewable energy sources this energy sources are exhaustible in nature and they are fossil fuels like coal petroleum natural gas and nuclear fuels this energy resources are formed by the decomposition of the plants and animal remains and which remain under the earth for millions of years to undergo a source of energy temperature and pressures have changed them into fuels let's discuss some of the non renewable energy resources coal coal is a combustible solid stratified rock of organic and mineral material coal is composed of carbon which which is of 60 to 90% hydrogen 1 to 12% oxygen 2 to 20% and nitrogen 1 to 3% and small amounts of phosphorus and sulfur coal it occurs as a sedimentary rock in association with carbonaceous shale sandstone and even fire clay petroleum the word petroleum has been derived from the word petra which means rock and oleum and which again means oil the petroleum means rock oil it this petroleum it is a complex mixture of hydrocarbon compounds the, the liquid petroleum is called crude oil petroleum gas is called natural gas and the semi solid to solid form of petroleum are known as asphalt tar pitch and bitumen Petroleum is found in underground reservoirs in sedimentary rock formations like sandstone, shale and limestone. 
In some wells, crude oil is found along with the natural gas and water. Petrol, diesel, kerosene, tar, LPG, lubricants and paraffin wax are some of the products that are obtained during the refining process. Petroleum, it is a cleaner fuel as compared to coal and it burns completely and leaves no residue. Natural gas. Natural gas occurs in association with the mineral oil. Natural gas is composed of about 95% of methane and with small amounts of propane and ethane. This natural gas, it is a fossil fuel. Natural gas deposits, it mostly accompany oil deposits because it is being formed by the decomposition by the remains of dead animals and plants that is buried under the earth. The gas supplied for household use, it is called as LPG or liquid petroleum gas and it is a byproduct that is obtained by refining the crude oil. The gas that is used for running vehicles is also known as CNG that is compressed natural gas and as the name suggests it is obtained from the natural gas. Liquefied petroleum gas or LPG. This petroleum gas is converted to liquid form under a pressure as LPG. The main component of LPG is butane and others being propane and ethane. It is odorless but the LPG in our domestic gas cylinders it gives a foul smell and this is due to the presence of ethyl mercaptan. It creates a foul smelling to LPG so that in case of leakage of the LPG cylinder it can be detected instantaneously. Compressed natural gas or CNG. It is used as an alternative to petrol and diesel for transport of vehicles. Petroleum and its products are used extensively in India. Transport sector, it accounts for about 50% of the total consumption. Road transport, it alone consumes 37%. Industries consume 16-20% to of the total oil output. Agricultural sector, it uses diesel and kerosene. LPG is used for cooking and lighting in urban and rural areas. Biomass energy. It is organic matter from wood, crop residues, cattle dung, manure, sewage, agricultural waste, etc. Biomass energy is of the following types. Agricultural and urban waste biomass and energy plantations. Baggies, coconut shells, cotton stalks, etc. These are agricultural waste and they produce energy by burning. Animal dung and human refuse, it has biomass energy. In rural India, animal dung cakes, they are burned to produce heat. The burning of plant residues or animal wasters in chulhas, it is practiced in villages. The burning of dungs, it destroys essential nutrients. It is more useful to convert the biomass into biogas. Energy plantations. The sun's energy, it is made and stored by the green plants through photosynthesis and then it is converted into biomass energy. We get the organic matter from trees, plants and their waste products. Trees like cottonwood, poplar and leucana etc. are some of the energy plantations. They may produce energy either by burning directly or by getting converted into burnable gas or they may be converted into fuels by fermentation. Human and Animal Muscle Power In the developing countries, human and animal muscle power, it is used for transportation, plowing, threshing, lifting water for irrigation. In simple way, use of machines is less, muscle energy of the human is being used more and more. Human and animal labor is tedious but does not produce pollution. But in many places, men and animals are being exploited by working for long hours and meager financial returns. There is a need in India to have strong renewable energy base in the villages. 
solutions to energy problems analysis has been done that the rural energy problems they are unabated but it is found that people are not made responsible in program planning and implementations rural energy program were planned to decentralize the planning and they could not produce result why because they did not include the communities of local area in the planning process there is a need of emphasis on promotion of renewable source of energy like solar wind and bioenergy these are the most relevant renewable energies for rural applications because these are locally available and they are useful due to their adaptability to the dispersed small and medium scale energy requirements solar energy can meet our rural needs for energy india being a tropical country solar energy is available abundantly and also it is eco friendly and it does not create pollution efforts are made to develop photovoltaic cells solar water pumps solar heaters solar cookers etc that's all for the session thank you